What's going on, my people? Welcome back to another week, The Mentality of Success. I'm Joshua Washington. It's great to have you all, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on the podcast. But I have something on my heart today, and that's this, this fact that continues to haunt us, which is that the fact that suicide is still one of the leading causes of death for men. One of the leading causes of death for men. And we have saw it recently uh, with, with the young man, Stitch, man, who, I mean, how can you not love this guy? watching him dance and, and watching him do his thing on, on, on television or, or on social media, only to, to open up your phone and see another life taken from us way too soon. And why this bothers me is the reason why that life was taken away too soon. And I, I, want, I want to share this with you because I want it to bother you as well. I want this to bother you so much that it sets a, a tone for the rest of this year and for every person that you have in your influential circle. Do you know for someone like this young man, Twitch, to, to take his own life, and I don't mean to speak about it lightly, but we gotta, we have to address it. For something like that to happen, it would have to mean that we have come to a place where we, we don't think our life has any more value to give. When someone makes that decision and leaves this, 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 this earth prematurely, that's value that's left on the table. That's value that's left within. And even further, there's this thing called suicide ideation, which really, it demonstrates that there are a lot of us who walk around daily with this idea that our life is not worth living. And we contemplate if it's worth staying here another day. And I know this one all too well because I, I share about it in the book that I almost forfeited my purpose at one point. And it took a massive turnaround in mentality. That's where the mentality of success was birthed out of, y'all. The mentality of success was birthed from, from a young man who didn't think life was worth living. And if not by the grace of God, I would be just like Twitch. And I know we want to start our new year off on a high note, on a happy note. And I want you to do the same. We got to have this conversation because you cannot go another year allowing the value within you to just lay dormant. You cannot go another year contemplating if your life is really needed here. You cannot go another year. And so today I want to share, I wrote some notes because I believe I'm talking to someone that you've, even, you've either been there or you know someone who has been there. And I want to encourage you by number one, letting you know I've been there too. And my life has tremendously changed since that point. But I want to give you some insight and, and some, uh, I know, some brotherly advice and, and, and tips on how you can make sure that you guard your life away from this lie that your life is not meant for the great value that it is. All right. But first, I want to start off with something I read this morning. I didn't plan on doing this, but I'm, I'm going to. I want to share this with you because I'd be, it'd be insincere for me to tell you that your life is valuable or to tell you um, all these other tips without giving you the most important one. And so here's something I read this morning. I was reading this kind of introduction to a book called Romans. Some of you have heard of it. Um, and it's something that jumped off on the page um, at me in the, in the introduction that was, I was going through. And I want to read that to you because it was talking about hope and how important it is. And it says, here's what it says. It says, apart from faith, we have no hope in life. Apart from faith, we have no hope in life. What does that mean? That means if you don't have, well, let me say it this way. That means that life begins, hope begins at the intersection of faith. Meaning, you and I, we can't sustain a life unless we believe that, number one, there's someone that created us and sustained us to live this life, and or number, and, or number two, that our life was meant for something. And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people that have a, a lot of different beliefs, but I'm going to tell you, it's very hard to believe that your life was meant for something if you don't believe you came from something or someone meaningful. That's why God plays such a big role in my life. And I don't, you know, I don't push it on anybody, but I tell people, you tell me what's better. 
My life got really, 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 really good once faith sparked in my life. I ain't talking about religion. This ain't that kind of show. And I ain't that kind of, you know, I don't believe in that. I'm talking relationship. And so today I want to kind of build on whatever relationship we may have through, through this screen. And I want to remind you of some things. And number one, the first thing I want to remind you of that I wrote down in my notes is that the world needs you. The world needs you. There is no backup plan. There is no second stream. There, there is, there's no one meant to serve the purpose that your life is meant to serve. The world needs you. And I'll give you kind of a scientific or practical way to think about this. Think about, think about something. If you, if you ever wonder how valuable you are or how unique you are, just do this. Just look at your hands. You could probably pick any other, you know, part of your body and, and have the same thing because you're all, you're uniquely made on your own. But your hands is a great reminder. You know, on, on our fingers, we have these, this thing, or maybe, yeah, I should say this thing known as a fingerprint. Did you know that no two fingerprints are the same? My, this, this, my right hand I'm holding up, it maybe looks like the left on the camera, but it's my right hand. This fingerprint, you can't find this anywhere else. You can't buy this at any, at any other store, any, anybody's lab. You probably can see the image of it if I've taken, you know, fingerprints, but no other hand in this world has the fingerprint that I have. And I'm here to tell you with that simple example that no one's life has the imprint, the footprint that your life was meant to have because the world needs you. And the worst thing we can do, especially starting a new year, is to allow these lies to continue to fester that our life is not valuable. Yes, your life is valuable because there's no one else coming to do what your life was meant to do. You may say, well, Josh, how do I discover that? How do I know that? That's a, a little bit of a further conversation. But point A, the first thing, the foundational truth that you need to stand on is that your life is valuable. The world needs you. Our communities need you. Your community needs you. Your family needs you. Your future needs you. And so don't forsake that and don't, as, as I say in the book, don't forfeit that. Don't forfeit the great future that's ahead of you. I know it may not look good right now, and maybe you're in a very dark season. I know what that's like, man. I know what it's like to wake up and every day seems more dreadful, more painful, more frustrating. You may be angry. Your circumstances may not look like you thought they would or you wish they would. I know what that's like. I've woken up and gone downstairs and the one thing I did have, which is my car, was gone. But when you know that the world needs you and your value goes far beyond any circumstance or material or possession, then you will hold on and you'll see through that darkness until you get to the light. So that's the first thing I want you to know. The world needs you, man. The world needs you. The second thing I wrote down here that I really want, I want to make sure I emphasize is that here's something that I had to learn going through that season where I was suffering from suicidal ideation. I had to learn that to exist, to exist is, it requires nothing. Like think about that. Existence really requires nothing. It's just really the waiting room. It's like you, it's you living your life in that waiting room before death. You know, just walking around, meaning, meaningless, there's no real value, You're just existing. And there was a time in my life where I was, I, I could safely say I was just existing. But there's a difference between existing and actually living. I want to say this the way I wrote it. Life is very different from existence. Existence requires nothing, but life requires work. Life requires work. Why am I saying this? Why is this something that I feel the need to say? Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I think a lot of us, there was a time in my life where I was 
averse to to work. I didn't like the idea of work. I wanted a life where I could just, you know, somehow make a lot of money and never have to work again. But and you may have felt that way. But can I tell you something? That is contrary to your existence. That is contrary to the purpose of your life. Did you know that the purpose of your life is to work? Why? Why am I saying that? And I don't mean work like that job you hate. I mean work. The purpose of your life is to create. Your life was meant for work. And this is important because one of the things that takes away or, or convinces us that lies to us that our life is not, not worth anything is, the, is when we get into these kind of habits or these routines or patterns where we feel like we're doing meaningless work. Maybe it's a job that you show up to every day and you absolutely hate. Maybe you're in that season. I know what that's like. There was one time when I was, I was a ticket boy for the Orlando Magic at, Am at Amway. Hated that job. Hated that job. Because I'm number one, I'm flat footed. So standing up for six, seven, eight hours and taking tickets on these flat feet does not work out for the back. And I remember nights, cold nights, I'd walk from that, from that, um, that, uh, arena down in my car, man. Just like, I, I can't do this another day. I thought my life was meant for so much more. But here's what the truth was. The truth was at that time in my life, the things I knew I should be doing, I wasn't doing them. I wasn't doing them because I knew they required work. And every time I thought about the work it required, it was overwhelming. And I felt like, nah, I don't want to do that. I don't feel like doing that. And it wasn't until I had a paradigm shift, which what we'll lead to in the next point, but it wasn't until I had a paradigm shift, got around the right people, and I learned what my true identity was and what and how much of a blessing work really is when you know that your life is valuable. Everything that your life is made for is meant to be worked out of you. There's no, there's no band coming to save you. There's no you know, million dollar check going to be written by the government. No reparations. It is everything that is the value that's within you is meant to be worked out of you. And if we fall to, uh, if we fall to this, pray to this lie, that work is somehow a bad thing, we will never grow into the value that our life was meant for. So here's some points I wrote down that I want to share with you. You must embrace this truth. You were created to work because you are creative. And in order to create, it requires work. None of us just snap our fingers and things come into existence. We have to work it. The second thing I want to write, I wrote down here is that Part of what I want you to work at in this year is what you tell yourself. The narrative that you allow to play in your mind. I am highly against telling myself anything that is bad for me. That's why, you know, as a, as a black man, I don't really walk around here telling myself that I'm oppressed or that I, I, I'm, I'm behind anyone else. I don't believe that. And I, and I grew up in one, I grew up in the hood. I've experienced what, well, I have not oppression, but I've experienced what discrimination looks like. I've experienced, you know, what, dare I say, even racism could look like. Growing up in, I grew up in one of the poorest counties, right? Let me, I say, let me say it this way. I grew up in one of the poorest places, but the richest counties. How, how does that happen? I've gone into that, you know, that city and seen how, you know, people look at us. I get it. But I don't tell myself that story. I don't tell myself that I'm somehow some kind of victim. Why is that? Because whatever you tell yourself is what you will believe and what your life will become. So if you believe that you are a victim, then guess what? Your life will become that. If you believe that no matter how hard you work, you're never going to, to get ahead, then that's what your life will become. It'll become this uh, uh, cyc uh, cyclical, this, this just moves in cycles of, of, going, of putting a lot of effort in, but never going anywhere. And it's all relative to the story we tell ourselves. So I don't tell myself any of those stories. And I encourage you in this upcoming year, don't tell yourself any of those stories either. Only tell yourself stories that align with the purpose and value of your life. Only tell yourself stories that align with the purpose and value 
of your life. Don't tell yourself any stories that are outside of that. that, are outside of that. Something else I wrote down here I think that's encouraging is, well, actually, let me finish up this whole story things. It's the damaging stories that, that bother us. And some of them you're not telling yourself. Other people may be telling you. Maybe there's someone else in your circle saying, oh, you ain't no good, or, or you'll never do this. Well, hope you failed again. Get away from those, those narratives. And that's the third point, actually. We walk into the third, I step right into that third point, which is don't walk alone. Do not walk alone. If you're, if you're experiencing one of those heavy seasons or you know someone that's experiencing a heavy season, do not allow them to walk alone. Come alongside them. And if they have people in their circle who are feeding them the wrong narratives, pull them out of that. And you combat that by, by speaking truth into their lives that aligns with the purpose and value of their lives. Listen, I am on a mission this year to put a dent in whatever whatever the statistics are meant to be for this year's suicide, your boy is focused on putting a huge dent in that because I refuse to let another year go by where there are young men and young women who are looking at their value and not seeing it for the purpose and worth that it truly has. Not on, not on my watch. You will have the mentality of success. If you didn't have it last year, you will have it this year because your life is meant for greatness and I want you to know it, but more so, I want you to learn how to live it and walk it out, all right? And if you do, in, in order to do that, I want you to stay, keep, stay locked in here. Actually, that's not what I want to do. Here, yeah, stay locked in here. Stay, stay, make sure you hit that notification button and, and make sure you share this with someone because you, this is how you can help to not walk alone. Maybe there's no one in your circle right now, but you can make sure you don't walk alone by making sure that you stay plugged in here. All right? I love you all. This is going to be a great year, y'all. 2023 is going to be a great year. I'll tell you more about what I'm, what I'm believing this will be this year at another time. But for now, I'm going to stop it there. And I will see you all same place, same time. And reminding you that success is your destiny. All right? I'll see you on the next one.